I try to imagine the disciples as they waited in that upper room. We all have our perceptions. What's going to happen? And they waited for the first day. Nothing happened. And the second day. And the third day. And the fourth day. By then someone's saying, I've got things to do at home. There are things we have to do. I've got responsibility. I can't stay in here. But they stayed. And on that wonderful Pentecostal day, the Holy Spirit came. They came together for prayer and something happened. They were together when the Holy Spirit fell on them. And I believe that the coming to Christ gave them that great sense of togetherness. We want to be together. Some of the most exciting things that I've seen in my Christian life were not on an individual basis, but in the midst of people coming together. See, I think it would be true to say that God's highest purpose is not in the individual, it's in the corporate. Now, I say that advisedly because I said in the first service how important you are to God. You are a gifted person. You've been called. God has a place for you. I think it's a little sometimes like a piece of the jigsaw puzzle. We all fit in somewhere. But the complete picture is not seen until all the pieces are together. Let me make very clear, God begins with the individual. Then he takes the individual and he joins them together. It's together that we become a body. As you get old and perhaps even not so old, you start to realise that your body is suffering from the ravages of time. Nobody likes that. And uh, I like the cute little saying, you're getting old when your mind makes contracts that your body can't keep. <laughs> I keep imagining I can do certain things and then find out that I can't. But you see, a body is made up of many different parts. And uh, when one part breaks down, it affects the whole body. So every part of the body may be not be getting decrepit, but because some parts are, it shows up. And uh, the Bible uses two illustrations to understand this. It talks about as being a body. And you know that your body is made up of all these bits and pieces that are so important. But then it talks about us being a building. We are called living stones that are being built together into a building as the temple of God. So the temple of God is not just made up of individuals. It's made up of living stones, and we are the living stones that are joined together to fulfill God's whole highest purpose. We're not a body on our own. I'm not the body of Christ. I'm a member of the body of Christ. I'm not a building on my own. I'm not the temple of God. I'm part of the temple of God. And as I read my scripture, I see that again and again, the plural is emphasized. We are. We are. We are the building. We are the body. That is so important. Now think about this. We can succeed at the individual level, but we can fail at the corporate level. You can have a great individual relationship with God, but that is not the end of it. That is the beginning of it. You might say, oh, I'm enjoying my relationship with God. I am delighted about that. I'm thrilled about that. That's how it should be. But it doesn't end there. There is a purpose in our relationship with God. Individually, we can love God. You can have a person who really loves God. And many people say that to me. I'm saying, well, are you fellowshipping anywhere now? Oh, no, but I love God. So easy to say that. I love God because it doesn't require anything. Real love requires some kind of action. You just say that you love someone in your family and never want to be with them, never want to be associated, never want to help them, care for them. That love is not very real to me. The individual can be a very good personal witness. You may be great at sharing the gospel. That's marvellous. Wonderful gift. But we can still fail to be part of Christ's functioning body. There are so many people today, and I think this has increased in recent years, 
that develop an independent spirit. You know, God and me, we're a majority. No, you're not. We need one another. We are to fit in. The Bible says God puts the members in the body as he chooses. I think that must be the most violated scripture in the Bible. We said, oh, I'm going to do the choosing. But he does choose. Now, God gives us great freedom. He gives us a great ability to make choices, gives us a will that we might make up our own minds. But so many people blame God for their own stupidity. I know that wouldn't be you. How many people have said to you, oh, God told me to do this, and there's disaster down the road. They never heard from God. They heard out of their own desire. That is what pleased them. You see, you can be successful individually as a Christian, yet fail to be part of a functioning body. But the New Testament church was born on that day of Pentecost, and there was that great sense of awe. We need one another. We need to be together. I am not complete on my own. And it's not just a physical thing of being together. That's part of it. It's a whole attitude of heart and mind. In any move of the Holy Spirit, in any revival you can re read about, there was a sense of people coming together. I love the story of the Hebrides revival. It's told to me by the evangelist writer Leonard Ravenhill. You may have even used it before. But there was this great revival that took place in the Hebrides. But it didn't start there. A man by the name of Duncan Campbell was attending a conference in some part of Scotland, I think. And he was one of the scheduled speakers. He was sitting on the platform when there came this inner urge that he should go to the Hebrides. Now, that was not on his radar. It was not on his plan. And he's wrestling with this thing, and it's getting stronger and stronger, till he, he turned to the chairman of the conference and said, excuse me, I, I have to leave. And the chairman said, well, don't be long, because you're the next speaker. Well, he said, I'm sorry, but I won't be back. And he went down to the airport and got one seat on the plane. There was only one left. That's all he needed. Flew across, landed on the tarmac. Didn't know what the good stepped off the plane. Where do I go from here? And, and here's a little church on the hill. So he decided to go up and goes up to this church. The doors open and inside there's a man. And the man is dusting with a feather duster in a way that only men know how to dust. Yeah. Just flicking it from one place to another. So he's dusting in there. And uh, Duncan Campbell said, well, there's something on here. The man said, yes, we have a meeting tonight. And Duncan Campbell said, uh, who's the speaker? And the fellow said, oh, Duncan Campbell. And Duncan Campbell said, I'm Duncan Campbell. How did you know I was coming? The fellow said, flicking his duster, in the same way as you knew to come. <laughs> now, the fishing fleet had left the harbour that morning. They were on their way to the fishing grounds, and as one, they turned around and headed back to the port. As those hardened fishermen tied up and got off and looked at one another, no one had given an order, they said, what are we doing? They said, we're going to the church. And that night revival broke out. You see, God drew them together. Something was happening. And I read about some of the moves of God that took place in Pensacola. People were lining up seven or eight hours before the meeting to get a seat. Won't that be exciting when people are outside waiting to get in. You see, this sense of togetherness is so powerful. And so when God starts to move, I think that people are irresistibly drawn together. The more that you are satisfied just with the individual, remember, it begins there, the less likely we're to see a move of the Holy Spirit. Because when the Spirit of God is moving, we're not going to come together as a duty, we're going to come together as a deep desire. 
Now, as you read through the Old Testament, the nation of Israel suffered loss when they lost their sense of their national destiny. When they did not understand that God had called them as a nation to be an example. When we lose our sense of destiny as a corporate body, I know there's many expressions of the corporate church, but God puts us where he wants us to be. And we become an expression of his body. 